Lots of testing to talk about. In fact, testing for the coronavirus is about to get a whole lot easier, faster, and safer, thanks to a research team from Rutgers University. This morning, we are joined by one of the lead researchers responsible for developing this new test. I'm going to be speaking right now to Andrew Brooks, the CEO of the Rutgers University Cell and DNA Repository. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So, Andrew, talk to me about this testing. It's a saliva test, and it's something that a person can self-administer? Yeah, it's something that um, requires less exposure to uh, a healthcare professional that otherwise would administer a, a nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swab. So it just requires the patient to uh, spit into the tube, put the cap on that releases the preservation agent, making it safe for both the patient uh, and the person uh, facilitating the collection. And how quickly can this be tested to see if there is a positive or a negative? So the test is very similar to what we do with the swab. So it goes to the lab, the virus is extracted. We use PCR to determine whether or not we can see the virus. So really what this does on the front end is it removes the barrier for uh, the limitation associated with collection. So more people can be collected uh, in a day uh, than with uh, having someone uh, administer it for you. Um, which allows more samples to get into the lab, more people to be tested um, uh, with the same tests that have already been uh, currently proven. Now, could there be a backup in the lab if you have more people testing at home, if you will? That's a great question. Um, it will present new bottlenecks, new hurdles. Um, but right now, uh, some of the biggest factors are actually the collection of the samples. Uh, we and others are working on increasing the throughput by adding instrumentation, miniaturizing assays. Um, we currently can test up to about 10,000 samples a day, and we'll try and uh, double that uh, wow. within the coming weeks. Um, but uh, you're right. Um, any part of this process as we break through new barriers may present new hurdles. But I think that uh, all of the technology providers are, are addressing those challenges now. So you were actually working on this prior to the pandemic, correct? Well, we've always been working in biomaterials. Our UCDR um, has been providing services for biomaterial collection and analysis for over 20 years. So we took the expertise that we had and tried to identify a better way to be able to address this problem. So just the area that we're in and where we work uh, gave us the insight and perspective uh, to apply something we've been doing for a long time for other applications uh, to, the, to the COVID issue. So let's make this tangible for the people at home watching. Any idea when these tests will be available for use? So they're available now. They'll be rolled out in uh, certain counties within New Jersey, starting, I believe, with Middlesex and through the RWJ Barnabas system. Uh, we'll be testing healthcare professionals and using the PPE that otherwise would have been used for taking tests to take care of patients, as well as making sure first responders and healthcare professionals are, are uh, tested as well. But uh, it's starting now, today. Okay, that's terrific. It's starting today in New Jersey, and it hopefully will be expanded to other states as we, we see this uh, with a, a positive effect, if you will. Now, you got a call from the White House, right? Give us an indication as to how that went and, and what that conversation was about. Yeah, after we received our, our EUA approval, we got a call from the COVID-19 testing task force at the White House, um, not just with congratulations, but with an offer to help. Uh, an offer uh, not unlike the questions that you just asked with respect to where are the hurdles? How do we get this into more people's hands? How do we expand testing? Uh, we feel that everyone needs to be tested so we can get kids back to school, we can get people back to work, we can get our economy started again, uh, and we can truly not understand uh, where we will be with this pandemic until more people are tested. Um, they. Uh, offered to contact uh, supply chains to provide instrumentation, to provide support uh, in order to be able to do this. And immediately following, they made introductions to life science companies that are involved in this space, pulling us together to really help make a difference on the expansion of testing. So they're very engaged. I was, um, I was pleasantly yeah, surprised with the that's call. that's terrific. It's going to be a lot of coordination in the days ahead, but Professor Andrew Brooks, thank you for what you're doing. It is uh, going to be breaking some of the barriers that we're facing right now and trying to get uh, control of this pandemic. So thank you for joining us and thank you for your good work. My pleasure. Thank